We're here in Middlebury, Connecticut. And once again, we found a waterproofing system that's been installed by another company. That's the wrong system for this particular type of foundation. On top of that, you're gonna see really bad ideas. Caused enormous amount of damage, enormous amount of deterioration to the walls, and all with genuine attempts in order to stop the water from coming through the walls. What I'm sweeping up is actually the deterioration of the wall, as you saw when we were tearing it down and we were hitting the hammer and taking off uh, uh, the wood that was holding the, the studs in, all of this white powder, that's uh, the deterioration of the wall, that's lime. The ingredients of concrete are sand, stone, and lime. Lime's the glue. It's the adhesive that holds the sand and stone together. And this is actually deteriorating and causing uh, uh, efflorescence. The definition of efflorescence is chemically unfolding. So all of this white powder is actually the breaking down of the concrete wall. Because of how they sealed it, it created a situation where the wall expedited and increased the amount of deterioration and the deterioration is actually rotting the lime out of the wall. The less lime in a concrete wall, the weaker the wall is. And there's an enormous amount of lime that's just fallen out of this wall. The reason you have a water problem is water fills up on the outside of your concrete wall, your concrete foundation. The area on the outside of this wall is probably six to eight feet wide when they originally were building the wall. That was how much was dug down, it was empty. Then they backfilled it in. The soil they backfilled in had already been dug up, rolled over, bulldozed, piled up, and then brought back in, put out, filled that hole on the outside of the wall, tamped down, but you'll never get it as dense as the existing soil. When you get a good heavy rain, Water follows the path of least resistance. That area, that six foot to eight foot wide area on the outside of the wall fills up with water, creates an enormous amount of pressure, is exposed to the concrete wall. Now concrete's porous by nature, so water absorbs into the wall. If, if this wall were not sealed and water was allowed to evaporate through, the deterioration level would be drastically lower than what you're looking at here. This is a major deterioration level because of the type of sealing that they did. Concrete should breathe. You should never seal it like this. Locking water into the wall with a, a tar-based uh, sealer like this is the worst idea that you could ever had. And you can see, as we had removed the wall, just how much damage has been done to this wall. And looking at it, and it's pitted concrete getting right into the wall with your hand. That's weakening of the wall. If you look here, you can see the type of waterproofing system that's in here. It's a gutter system. That's where the water has to come up and fill up to. And I'm going to show you, we're going to be taking it out in a second, and it's a little gutter, it's about this big by about that big, and it sits about an inch, inch and a half below the floor. Water's got to fill up underneath the floor, go over to it, as we had said before, but it's such a low volume system, it does nothing to reduce that buildup of water on the outside of the wall. The type of system that we use, our, our super dry system, puts in this much drainage this deep, and it actually facilitates and speeds up the drop of the water buildup outside the wall. And so it's there for a very little bit of time and, and actually compared to this system, never gets anywhere near as high. So we're gonna be able to manage that water table in heavier storms that it's only gonna get about this high on the outside of the wall. If we can do that, we've fixed several different problems. One, we're not letting that water build up and create a ton of pressure pushing on the wall. Two, the amount of absorption is gonna be um, limited to this area here and we use proprietary products that we treat the bottom part of the wall that turns it from being porous concrete to non-porous concrete turns it into a concrete waterproof membrane uh, and actually repairs the concrete as uh, this product crystallizes and grows through the wall I mean it's really a, a complete total fix not addressing a symptom sealing the wall addressing a symptom Putting in a little gutter system within the, an inch of the top of the floor, that's trying to address a symptom. Building code states that if you move part of your basement floor, if you replace it, you have to replace it with a minimum of three and a half inches. 
Check your, with your uh, building inspector. If you're ever going to have somebody waterproof your basement, call and tell them what the specs are. Ask the company, hey, how much concrete am I, are you going to replace if you're going to put drainage in? You have to move part of my basement floor. Ask him, how much are you going to put back? If he doesn't understand the three and a half inch thing, you got the wrong company. He's probably going to give you the wrong system for your particular type of foundation. The way a foundation is put together is, is underneath this wall, there's a footing. Footings are, are, are traditionally 16 inches wide. Walls are eight inches, 16 inches. They take the eight inches, they put it in the center so it's stable. Leaves a four inch ledge on the outside, four inch ledge on the inside. The floor comes over and it sits on that ledge. That's the idea, the, the, the footing holds the floor up. You got four inches of floor. The basement we're in right now probably has around 70,000 pounds of concrete floor that's being held up by that ledge. That's a really good thing. It also butts up and holds the walls out so when water does fill up as high as we've seen here, it pushes in, that floor holds the wall in place. They support each other. It's three big pieces of concrete, your footing, your floor, and your wall. They all fit together and they support each other. This particular system takes the floor entirely off the footing, as you're about to see. So you have the whole floor sitting on what's ever underneath. You couldn't possibly have good support for 70,000 pounds of concrete floor. But if you could keep that floor on top of the footing, that's the way you want to install a waterproofing system. A pretty clear comparison is if we look at the wall here where we have the sealer the, and the, uh, the tar that's been on there that's been pushed off and all the deterioration behind it, we're going to go over and take a look at, at a wall over here that hasn't had tar on it. Now, this wall still has had water absorbed through it because the type of the waterproofing system um, that we have, you can see water, water has come through it because the type of waterproofing system doesn't drop that false water table. Look at the water lines, you see here? See up here? The concrete's perfect, right? As you go down here, you can see that's how high water builds up in that backfill area, that six to foot, eight foot wide area behind this wall that was empty when they originally built the wall. But the difference between what I just showed you over there where the tar was on the wall, you've had water through here, but you don't have the deterioration like you do over there where the wall is literally disintegrating because they put the wrong type of sealer on the wall. Same effect that dry lock has on a wall is what that, that tar does to a wall. So you'd rather have a wall left alone and breathe and have some efflorescence come through and for the most part, solid, as opposed to disintegrating like that one over there with all that efflorescence. You're going to see how well this thing is managing the water. This is a high end. Suppose it, it's patented. Just shows you how, how much a, a patent means. High end, it's called super high tech basement waterproofing. And this is what you have. You have water sitting here on top of your footing. What I need to have explained to me by the designer of this particular type of system, this high-tech system as it's portrayed, is how does this water with no pitch on, on, this, on this system, and it's sitting like this, how does it get all the way around to the other side of the basement and into the sump pump to get pumped up out away from the house? That's a mystery. Um, I don't think it can happen. It, obviously it can't or else this water wouldn't be sitting here and soaking up into the floor and causing the floor to be damp and rotting out the bottom part of the walls. This system that was, uh, is still here, which we're about to tear out, what they've done here is they've gone around a hot water tank and, uh, in order to protect in case this thing, is, if this thing blows. When these things blow, they shoot water out you know, several inches in every direction. So this is, this is virtually useless uh, as far as to protect against that. So if we slide this out of the way, I can show you. So ideally what you want to do is you want to be able to get straight across and have your drainage run continuously through here rather than going around there. They have some great products that they have that are much higher, have much higher lips on them that you can actually set the tank in and tie right into the, the type of system that we would be putting in. So that, that would be all gone. Now as we move over here, this is, this is kind of unique. 
And it's, it's part of that whole hodgepodge thing. We call it like the Lego approach to, to basement waterproofing where they just take pieces. And if you look down, there's like a little piece here, another small piece here, another little piece here, a tiny piece here, and, little, and it's a Lego approach. Do you see the cobwebs that are here? All right, so it's not like this has been staged or anything like that. Look where the water is. You have standing water at this level and you have a waterproofing system in here. And as we remove this, you're gonna see that the gutter system manages the water about this far down from the top of the floor. So this whole area sits in water, as you can see where it's exposed. That means your floor is gonna absorb water, it's always gonna be damp, and you're never ever gonna have a completely dry basement. This is the wrong system for this particular type of foundation. Okay, so you have this, this little grate train here that goes down about here, and I imagine it's probably gonna come out pretty easy. So that pops out. So here's what you have as far as your access. If you look where the standing water is, do you see where the water is here? Well, this is the access to get into the drainage, which has to go all the way across here to the pump. So that's your access in order to, this is the only drainage you have because the smallest amount of access is the only access you have because if it can't get through here, it's not getting anywhere else. Think about it, if you could get this drainage down around 10 to 12 inches and put a significant amount of drainage in, that also would drop that water table that we're talking about on the outside, that false water table, and keep this from ever getting anywhere near the bottom of the floor, let alone the whole floor sitting in it, that's how you get your basement dry. But look, there's this piece here, and then this is where the drainage is. So let me just, I'll just tap it a little bit. Now, the one thing you don't want to be able to do is take a three pound hammer and be able to remove your entire basement floor. I'm not usually the one doing the demo, but when it comes to removing this type of a system, it's not really much of a demo. I mean, you're just looking at, if you take a look here, look, look, this is supposed to be moving water over to where the pump is. If you see here, the whole floor is sitting in water. You see here, with heavier rains, this water would get up to this high, and the whole floor is, is this close to having water overflow on top of it. But if you look here, how much absorption you're getting up into the floor, you just can't get a dry basement with this type of system, with this type of foundation. We finished up here in Middlebury, Connecticut, and look what we found. I mean, it's amazing that these systems that are just wrong for a particular type of foundation. We, we broke up the floor, we pulled it up, there's standing water on every part, whether it's the farthest uh, place from the pump to the closest place to the pump, the whole floor is sitting in water. The floor is off the footing, it's lost the support of the footing, it's no longer holding the walls out, we've got structural issues, we've got volume issues, we've got flow issues, there's pitch issues, there's every issue in the book, then there's other issues where they tried to seal the wall, where it created all kinds of problems, expedited all kinds of deterioration and disintegration of the walls. The uh, moral of the story, I guess you'd say, is make sure you get the right company to do the right thing for your particular type of foundation. Give us a call, American Dry Basement Systems. Hey, if you like the video, hit our like button, subscribe so you can get our other uh, videos as we come out, and we've been putting them out like crazy, and all different kinds of types of great information. If you do have a wet basement, check us out, check our other videos out. I think you'll find a lot of great info.